a magic day to you. Welcome to another session on General Physics 2. And for this video lecture, we are going to talk about thermal expansion. And we have the following objectives. I hope that at the end of this week, at the end of this session, you will evaluate yourself if you able to meet the following expectations. At the end of the sessions, you learners are expected to, number one, define coefficient of thermal expansion and coefficient of volume expansion. You should be able to calculate volume or length changes of solids due to change in temperature. And lastly, analyze real-life situations and correlate the application of the lesson in your daily lives. So please get your calculators, your writing materials, your notebooks, and your notes. Let's start our discussion. When you are riding your bicycle and you pass a bridge, you would see a gap between the bridge and the main road. Or when you check the train tracks, you would see gaps in between. These gaps are called expansion joints. But why? Are they placed in that kind of places at the very first place? Okay, these gaps are placed are there for a specific reason. Okay, now before that, let's check what you what you see here in the video. As you can see, the blacksmith here are trying to mold these metals, okay, into some components of a telecommunication towers and when I talk to a blacksmith here it's he says that these materials are being ordered by smart teleco for their uh, tower now the blacksmith here utilizes flame to mold or to reshape these um, metals these metals here why what's with heat okay when you increase okay when you increase the temperature of any material, this material tends to expand. That is why when we go back to our expansion joints here, these gaps that you see are present because it allows the materials to expand as temperature increases. Because most materials expand when their temperature increases. For example, a completely filled and tightly cup bottle of water cracks when it is heated but you can lose a metal jar by running hot water over it these reactions of materials to the increase in temperature or to the change in temperature is called thermal expansion okay so the tendency of the materials to expand when there is an increase in temperature is called thermal expansion so in short these joints here are present to relieve the stress when the materials okay of this bridge and this road expanded when there is an increase in temperature especially during high noon where the temperature is very very hot so what would happen if this expansion joins at the very first place that allows thermal expansion of the materials is not present? So let's assume that we clamp the ends of our rod rigidly to prevent expansion or contraction. We place it really together, very, very close to together tightly. And then we change the temperature, okay? There's change in temperature. So in that case, thermal stress develop and the rod would like to expand or contract okay but the clamps won't let it okay the thing that we use to help it light those rods on bridges or anything okay the resulting stresses may become large enough to strain the rod irreversibly or worst case even break it and we don't want our bridges, our metal structures to collapse because of this thermal stress. So expansion joints are there, okay? The gap that allows the expansion of materials due to the change in 
temperature. Is that clear? I hope that it is clear at your end and you understand what thermal expansion is. So at this point, we now have the general idea that when an object or a system experiences a change in temperature, it expanded or it will expand. So at this point, we are going to discuss the change in length or linear expansion and change in volume or volume expansion of a material or a system. Let's start with linear expansion. So suppose you have a rod that has an initial length L sub 0. So for example, if this is our rod, this is the L sub 0 or initial length of our rod at some initial temperature T sub 0. Now, when the temperature of this rod changes by delta T, the length changes by delta N. An experiment shows that if delta T is not too large, let's say less than 100 degrees or so, the delta L or the change in length is directly proportional to our delta T. Okay? Ch let's check this uh, image. So, when the, when the change in temperature or delta T changes or doubles, the change in length also doubles because delta T and delta L are also directly proportional. Now, suppose if we have two rods made of the same material, okay, and experiences the same temperature change delta T, but one rod is twice as long as the other one then the change in the length, in its length, is also twice as great. Therefore, delta L must also be directly proportional to initial length. Now, there is a third factor that affects the amount of the change in length when there is an, there is an increase or decrease in temperature, and that is the type of material. So, delta L is also dependent on the type of material that we have. And each type of material has different proportionality constant or what we call the coefficient of thermal linear thermal expansion represented by the Greek letter alpha. Okay? This Alpha here describes the thermal expansion properties of a, of a particular material. And the units of alpha or the coefficient of linear thermal expansion are per Kelvin or per Celsius degree or K negative 1 or C degree raised to the power of negative 1. Now, always remember that a temperature interval or change is the same in Kelvin and Celsius. So later on in the problem solving part, don't be shocked that uh, the given is Kelvin, but uh, the unit is Kelvin, negative one, but our answer is in terms of temperature is Celsius because regardless if Kelvin or Celsius, delta T is just the same. Okay? Now I'm showing you here the different coefficient of linear expansion values for different materials. As you can see, for different materials, okay, the amount of coefficient or the, coef the proportionality constant is different. So, uh, if this type of materials are heated, they will expand differently at the same, at different amounts. So, mathematically, we may express the relationships of all three factors affecting our delta L, our linear expansion in an equation stated as Delta L or linear expansion is equal to the product of alpha times L sub 0 or initial length times delta T. Where, I repeat, delta L represents the change in length or the linear expansion. L sub 0 or L naught is the initial length or original length of the material. Delta T, which is equal to T sub 2 or final temperature minus T sub 1 or initial 
temperature. Or in short, that is the change in temperature. And the alpha is the coefficient of linear thermal expansion. So for many materials, every linear dimension changes according to this equation. Okay? Thus, L or the length could be the thickness of a rod. It can be the side of a square sheet or the diameter of materials or the diameter of a hole. And some materials such as wood or single crystals expand differently in different directions but we won't consider that okay, this complication in our discussion. Now, to understand better thermal expansion qualitatively, let's look at the molecular level. Consider the interatomic forces between atoms in a solid in a solid as like a spring okay just like what you see here in this figure okay each atom that we have here vibrates okay in its equilibrium position now when the temperature increases the energy and the amplitude of the vibration of these atoms also increases Okay? And the interatomic spring forces okay, are not symmetrical about equilibrium position. They usually behave like a spring that is easier to stretch than to compress. So as a result in the increase in temperature, okay, increase in the, in, that, in the kinetic energy and the amplitude, when the amplitude of vibration increases, the average distance between atom also increases. This led now to the every dimension of the material at the macro level increases as well. Okay? And the relationship here, the relationship of the potential energy here are shown in this graph. Okay? Now, take note that the direct proportionality expressed in the equation for linear thermal expansion is not exact. It is approximately correct only for sufficiently small temperature changes. So, if the temperature changes is too large or too large, okay, this equation might not be applicable anymore. So, for the average values of the coefficient of thermal expansion for different materials, always refer to the table that I presented earlier. Okay? So, let's proceed to example number one. Get your calculator. Problem number one states that a surveyor uses a steel measuring tape that is exactly 50.00 meters long at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? The markings on the tape are calibrated for this temperature. Now, the question is, what is the length of the tape when the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius? So, let's identify our given for this problem. We have the following given here. L sub 0 or initial length is equal to 50 meters. T sub 0 or the initial temperature is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. And T sub F is equal to 35.0 degrees Celsius. And the coefficient of linear thermal expansion of the steel is, is equal to 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin. And we are asked to find the new length or L sub F of the steel tape at 35 degrees Celsius. Now, let's solve example number 1. So, our main equation for example number 1 is Delta L, or the change in the length or linear expansion, is equal to coefficient of linear expansion alpha multiplied by L sub 0 times delta T, which is also equal to alpha times L sub 0 times the quantity or the difference between the final temperature minus initial temperature. Now, let's substitute the values for each variable, okay? Our coefficient of linear expansion is equal to 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin times 50.00 meters times 35 minus 20 
And if we're going to simplify this one, so we have 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin times 50.00 meters times 15 Kelvin. And if you're going to multiply the three values that we have here, your delta L is approximately equal to 9.00 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3 meters. Now, let's add the change in its length, delta L, to its initial length to get the new length of our steel tape at 35 degrees Celsius. So our main equation now is final length is equal to initial length plus change in length. So we have 50 meters plus 9.00 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3 meters. Okay, the answer is 50.009 meters or approximately equal to 50.00 meters. Now, as you can see, the change in its length is too small that we cannot see it visibly with our naked eye. And the new length after the increase in temperature is approximately still at 50.00 meters. However, take class, always remember that even the small difference that we have in this problem, okay, between the scale reading, what happens kasi between the scale reading in the steel tape, okay, and the true distance may not be equal. And the precision of our measurement is also affected. So we still need to be very careful even if our materials experiences slight changes in its length. Okay? Now, Let's proceed to another example for you to really understand linear thermal expansion. Let's have example number two, Taipei 101. One of the tallest buildings in the world is Taipei 101 in Taiwan at a height of 1,671 feet. Let's assume that this height was measured on a cool spring day when the temperature was 15.5 degrees Celsius. You could use the building as a sort of a giant thermometer on a hot summer day by carefully measuring its height. Suppose you do this and discover that the Taipei 101 is 0 0.471 foot taller than its official height. What is the temperature? Assuming that the building is in thermal equilibrium with the air that its entire frame is made of steel okay them is made of steel so our given for this problem are the following okay the initial length of our taipei 101 which is equal to 106 1671 feet rather initial temperature is at 15.0 degrees celsius and the delta l or change in length which is equal to 0 0.471 feet and the coefficient of linear thermal expansion of our steel, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin or per Celsius degree. And we are asked to find the final temperature of our Taipei building. Now, let's solve example number 2. So our main equation for example number 2 is still delta L or linear thermal expansion is equal to uh, alpha times L sub 0 times delta T or that is also equal to alpha times L sub 0 times the difference between final temperature minus initial temperature. Now, since we are looking for T sub F, let's isolate T sub F. Let's divide both sides first with alpha times L sub 0, so we can isolate T sub F minus T sub 0. So when we do this one, we divide both sides, so uh, our new equation will look like this. Delta L divided by alpha times L sub 0 is equal to T sub F minus T sub 0. So to, con uh, to isolate T sub F, we transpose negative T sub 0 to the other side, it became uh, T sub F, or final temperature, is equal to delta L divided by alpha times L sub 0 plus T sub 0. Okay? Now, let's substitute the values for each given variable. So, you have delta L, 
which is equal to 0 0.471. That is the length, okay, the change in length that we measured as stated in the problem, all over the coefficient of linear thermal expansion of a steel is equal to 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 uh, per Celsius degree times 1,671 feet, which is the original length of our Taipei 101, plus our initial length, which is e initial temperature rather, which is equal to 15.5 degrees Celsius. Okay? Then we simplify our first ter term. 0.471 divided by 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 times 1,671 is equal to 23.488689 uh, 23.4889 23 per Celsius degree plus 15.5 degrees Celsius. The answer is 38.99 degrees Celsius. Okay, therefore, the new temperature, okay, or the temperature of the Taipei 101, where its length changes by 0 0.471 feet, is at 38.99 degrees Celsius. Okay, and that's linear thermal expansion. Let's proceed to volume expansion. Increasing temperature usually causes an increase in the volume for both liquid and solid materials. Just as with linear expansion, experiment shows that if the temperature change or delta T is not too big, okay, the increase in volume or delta V is approximately proportional, directly proportional to both the temperature change and the initial initial volume of the okay of the material okay and delta v or the volume expansion is also directly proportional to the type of material that we have mathematically we can express the relationship between the volume expansion or delta v to the initial volume temperature change and the proportionality constant of the type of material we have in this equation where delta V is equal to beta multiplied by V sub 0 multiplied by delta T, where delta V is the change in volume or the volume expansion, V sub 0 is the initial or original volume of the material, delta T, which is also equal to T sub 2 or the final temperature minus T sub 1 or the initial temperature or just the change in temperature. And beta which represent the proportionality constant or the coefficient of volume thermal expansion the units of this beta are still per kelvin or per celsius degree just like what we have earlier in our alpha values okay and the value of this constant is different for different materials okay now take note, okay, that the equation that we have here is only valid for small changes in the temperature. Okay? And for many substances, our beta value here decreases at low temperature. Okay? And there is, okay, there is a simple relationship for solid materials this is for solid materials there is a simple relationship between the volume expansion beta and the linear expansion coefficient alpha okay we can prove the relationship between beta and alpha using calculus but the simpler analogy is that when there is an increase in the temperature okay the side length of materials increases and because of that the volume also increases. Think of it as a holistic expansion. Okay? So whenever a material uh, material ex experiences a change in temperature, it will expand in three dimensions or holistically. Okay? And the relationship between beta and alpha are stated here. Beta is just equal to three times the 
alpha value of a certain material. So, for example, if you want to get the coefficient of volume expansion of a glass, okay, and you only have the alpha value, all you need to do is to multiply, okay, the alpha value with 3. And you have now the beta value for the glass, okay? And we have here the different values for the coefficient of volume expansion for different types of materials. And as you can see here, okay, the value for liquids, the beta value for liquids is are generally much greater or larger than those solids. For example, ethanol 75, okay, glass 1.2 to 2.7. Invar is 0 0.27, quartz is 0 0.12. Now, let's take this caution when you are heating an object with a hole. If you have a solid object that has a hole in it, what happens to the size of the hole when the temperature of the object increases? A common misconception is that when the object expands, the hole will shrink because the material expands into the hole. But the truth of that matter is that when the object expands, the hole will also expand. Just like what you see here in this figure. As we stated in the linear expansion part, every linear dimension of an object changes the same way when the temperature changes. Okay? The only situation in which a hole will fill in due to thermal expansion is when two separate objects expand and closes the gap between them. But if you have this type of object here in this figure, the hole will also expand. Let's proceed to example number three. Volume change due to temperature change. And our problem is this. A 200 cubic centimeter glass flask is filled to the brim with mercury at 20 degrees Celsius. How much mercury overflows when the temperature of the system is raised to 100 degrees Celsius? The coefficient of linear expansion of the glass is 0 0.40 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin. Let's identify first the given for this problem. We have the following given. Our initial volume of the glass is equal to 200.0 cubic centimeter. And the volume of our mercury is also 200.0 cubic centimeter. Now, the alpha value of the glass is equal to 0 0.40 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin. And the volume expansion coefficient or beta value of the mercury is equal to 18 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin. Okay? And our initial temperature is 20 degrees and our final temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Let's find the volume of mercury that will overflow. So let's now solve Example number 3. Let's start by solving the amount of volume change when the glass flask and the mercury is heated up to 100 degrees Celsius. And always remember the relationship between alpha and beta, where beta is equal to 3 times the alpha value. Let's start by calculating the volume change of the glass using this equation, beta times initial volume V sub 0 times delta T, which is also equal to 3 times alpha times V sub 0 times T sub 2 minus T sub 1. Now, let's substitute the values, okay? In our equation, we have 3 times 0 0.40 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin times 200 cubic centimeters times 100 minus 20. And we simplify 100 minus 20, it will become 3 times 0 0.40 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin times 200 cubic centimeters times 80 Kelvin. 
And if you multiply all the things and simplify our expression, the change in the volume of the glass is equal to 0 0.192 cubic centimeter. Then, we calculate now, we will now calculate the change in volume of the mercury using the equation beta times initial volume of mercury times delta T or that is equal also to beta times initial volume times T sub 2 minus T sub 1. Then we simplify and uh, substitute the value of our given variables here. So we have 18 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin times 200 cubic centimeters times 80. Our change in volume is equal to 2.880 cubic centimeter. So to calculate for the amount of the mercury that will overflow, we subtract delta V of the mercury minus delta V of the glass. So we have 2.880 cubic centimeters minus 192 cubic centimeters. Our answer is equal to 2.688 cubic centimeters. So the amount of the mercury that will overflow is equal to 2.688 cubic centimeters. Okay? And we have an alternative solution for this problem, which is much, much shorter. And it will look like this. Delta V sub H, or the change in volume for the mercury minus the change in volume of the glass, is equal to beta of the mercury times initial volume of the mercury times delta T minus the beta value of the glass times initial volume of the glass times delta T. Now, since the volume of the glass and of the volume of mercury is just equal, and delta T is also equal for both materials, we can rewrite the equation and it will look like this one. So, we have initial volume times delta T times um, the beta value of mercury minus the beta value of the glass. So, if we're going to substitute the values, we have 200 cubic centimeter times 80 Kelvin times 18 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 minus 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5, our answer is still the same. The amount of the mercury that will overflow is still equal to 2.688 cubic centimeter. Let's now proceed to example number 4, copper cylinder. A copper cylinder is initially at 20 degrees Celsius. At what temperature will its volume be 0.150% larger than it is at 20 degrees Celsius? Okay? So in this case, we don't know yet the initial volume of the copper cylinder. So we will form um, an assumption. Let 1.00 cubic meter be equal to its initial volume of the copper cylinder at 20 degrees Celsius. Thus, if we get the 0.150% of 1, that is equal to 1.5 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3 cubic meter. So, let that be your delta V in this case. So, to solve for this uh, problem, let's isolate T sub F from our main equation for delta V, which is equal to beta times V sub 0 times delta T. Okay, or we can rewrite that as beta times V sub 0 times T sub F minus T sub I. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to isolate T sub F, we divide both sides by beta times V sub 0. So we can isolate T sub F minus T sub I. Okay, and it will look like this after we cancel out beta and V sub 0 on the left side of this equation. So we have now T sub F minus T sub I is equal to delta V minus beta times V sub 0. Let's continue isolating T sub F by transposing negative T sub I to the right side of the equation. So we have now T sub F is equal to delta V all over beta times V sub 0 plus T sub I. 
Now, let's substitute the value for our given variables. So we have delta V, which is equal to 1.5 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3 cubic meter, all over 5.1 times 10 raised to the power of negative 1 per uh, Celsius degree times 1.00 meter, cubic meter rather, plus 20.0 degrees Celsius. If you're going to input that in your calculator, do the necessary operation, our answer is equal to 49.41 degree Celsius. It means that the copper cylinder will be 0.150% larger than its original volume at 49.41 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, if you are the blacksmith that you want to achieve this kind of volume for the cylinder, you just need to hit, uh, hit it up up to 49.41 degrees Celsius. And that ends our discussion for volume expansion and linear expansion. So I want you to think about the following questions. Number one. Pouring cold water into hot glass or ceramic cookware can easily break it. What causes the breaking? And explain why Pyrex, a glass with a small coefficient of linear expansion, is less susceptible. Number two, does it really help to run hot water over a tight metal lid on a glass jar before trying to open it? Explain your answer. Number three, one method of getting a tight fear, say of a metal peg in a hole in a metal block, is to manufacture the peg slightly larger than the hole. The peg is then inserted when at a different temperature than the block. Should the block be hotter or colder than the peg during insertion? Explain your answer. Then, number four, problem solving. Calculate the length of a one meter rod of a material with the thermal expansion coefficient alpha 2.0 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 kel per Kelvin when the temperature is raised from 300 Kelvin to 600 Kelvin. And lastly, the outer diameter of a glass jar and the inner diameter of its iron lid are both 725 millimeters at room temperature at 20 degrees Celsius. What will be the size of the difference in these diameters if the lid is briefly held under hot water until its temperature rises to 50 degrees Celsius without changing the temperature of the glass. And lastly, a US penny has a diameter of 1.00 cm at 20 degrees Celsius. The coin is made of a metal alloy, mostly zinc, for which the coefficient of linear thermal expansion is 2.6 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 per Kelvin. What would its diameter be on a hot day in Death Valley, Valley at 48 degrees Celsius? How about on a cold night in the mountains of Greenland, which is at negative 53.0 degrees Celsius? So please think about it and prepare for the web conference. Now, it's some time for reflection. In real life, you have been dealing with thermal expansion and contraction as an effect of the change in temperature. From the moment you turn on the stove to cook rice, turning on your air conditioning unit in your room, or even placing your spoon inside the glass of your hot milk or coffee, everything expands every time there is an increase in temperature. So in your life now, as you are facing a lot of pressure and battles in life, how does the lesson today help you face all of this? How are you as of the moment? How are you coping from pressures, stress, and battles of your life? And that ends 
our discussion for thermal expansion where we found out that when an object experiences an increase in temperature, it will expand. And if there is a decrease in temperature, it will contract. And the amount of expansion is directly proportional to the initial length, initial volume, the, in, the initial temperature of the material, okay, and the change in the temperature of the material, and lastly, the type of the material. To be specific, the volume expansion coefficient, beta, and the linear thermal expansion coefficient, alpha. I hope you learned a lot from our discussion in this video lecture. That's all. Ad majorem de gloria.